Picture this, you just produced a beat that became a huge hit single. You're really excited about it. And then you meet another producer who tells you that they actually made that beat. You know they didn't because you made the beat. You don't know who they are. This stuff happens all the time. But what would you do in that situation? Leave a comment. Maybe it's actually happened to you because it's happened to me. But I got I got super producer fat boy here to tell a story about this happening to him when he produced one of Gucci Mane's biggest hit songs. The story is absolutely insane. You're gonna wanna watch this. There was someone in my city claiming they made Wasted and you didn't, or they like ghost produced it. And you told me, cause I, when I shared this with you, you were like, yeah, there were a couple other people who did that. <laughs> I, it, it's why, like, when I first got my placement, I, you know, I'm from a city where people don't get big records. Um, it's, it's not a music business city. There, there are a couple of us here, but there was a lot of skepticism, and I was hearing rumors that oh, I didn't really make the record, blah blah blah. But that's a very low risk lie. A high risk lie is saying actually I did that because now you got to prove it, and you look like a a big goofball yeah. once they determine that you actually were lying. So it's weird. Sh share a story about that because it is very strange, it's weird, man. It's weird. I've had a man, I've had a situation where um because you know when when Gucci when Gucci was 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 him him um it would just be a lot of people trying to claim working with Gucci just for no reason, you know. So um and I I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a modest, humble producer. I I don't really go out and and do the whole hey look at me thing and I did this and I did that. That's never been my uh my that's never been my MO. Um so a lot of times people don't know when they're actually sitting next to me. Um so I've had I I've had people claim that record to me. Um <laughs> no way. T tell tell me how that went down. So um you know, anytime, in any time you would meet somebody, and and you can always tell, you can always tell when it's a person that's trying to get in the business, um, because they're talking a way too much. You know, they're just talking about all the stuff that they did. I mean, if you did all this stuff, I don't know about it anyway. Because if you did something that's jamming like that, I'm gonna find out who produced it. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look. You got these big records like that? I'm going to know who did these records. Like, that's just how it is. Us as producers in this industry, I don't care who it is. When you, when you, when you drop a banger like that, we're going to go out our wide, way to find out who did this record because this shit is hot. You know? So, me being, you know, not that guy that's like, I did that, I did this. Um, you know, just being around at events, people would come and talk to you. Um, and, and, and I would tell them, I would tell them I'm fat boy. You know, they'd introduce themselves. I say, good to meet you, you know, fat boy. Um, but I'm not giving you my resume. You can look that up literally. So, um, just in conversation, you know, they're telling me what they've done. Um, yeah, I'm such and such man. Um, I, I did a lot for, for Jeezy, you know, a lot of stuff for Gucci, you know, uh, I did, uh, Wasted for Gucci. I was like, you did Wasted? It's like, man, that's a banger. And I would never tell him that I did Wasted. You know, I, I would, I, I, I would, I, cause it's entertaining for me. So I want to hear how far they going to go with this. Like, just, just, you know, just go. Cause this is entertainment for me. This is funny. This is going to make me laugh. Cause I want to see, uh, how far you going to go with it. I might even ask you, like, how did you produce it? Like, what, what did you use and stuff like that? Um, and the guy said, FL. I was like, nope. You know, in my mind, I did not make Wasted on FL. I did Wasted on the MPC 4000 and the Phantom. And that was it, you know. And, 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 the, and the chord hit and the, uh, and the timpani was all on the same patch, you know. I've seen people try to recreate it and they do them separate. No, nope. there's a patch in the Phantom where the left hand keys is the 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 uh, timpani. I know what you're talking about. I had the Phantom uh, rack, so yep. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So 
I'm just listening to the story, man, and he's telling me how he created Wasted and all that. I was like, yo, man, I'm giving him props and all that. Yo, that's that's dope, man. Yo, that that's that's one right there, man. And uh the same guy, the same guy, uh, when he walks off, somebody whispered in his ear and told him, you know, that's fat boy, man. He did waste it. Uh, and I saw the guys look, you know, when he turned around and, and looked at me. And I'm already looking and I know the person is, that's in his ear is telling him he did waste it. Um, so just looking at his reaction, he, he, never, he, he never came back to clarify anything. But you can see the look on his face like, oh, snap, man. Oh, man, don't expose me. Don't expose me. You know, and I'm not that kind of person, man. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I, I, I know you hustling and all that. But, you know, you, you, don't, you don't have to go that route uh, to get on. But, you know, needless to say, I never, ever heard of the, the kid after that. Because if you are who you say you are, Eventually, even even if you aren't who you say you are at that time, if you're that guy, eventually I'm gonna hear. I'm going to hear from you, you know, because we all we we we've all like this is our official first time meeting, but I've known your name for years. I've known your name for years. You got stuff out there, you know. So and yeah, no, we'll, we will know that people act, people really don't understand how small the music business is. It's this big. It's this big, you know, so um, and, and, and it's crazy because a, a lot of us before before we ever have any major placements or, 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 or go on to do some some big things. We've been around each other. We've met each other before. You know, we didn't know who we were at the time. But a lot of times we've been because if you're, you know, especially back then, um, if you're trying to get in the business, you're either going to. Come to Atlanta at that time and be around some of the, the, the studio district. We're going to run into each other at that time. You're talking about Gucci, Jeezy, T.I., Lil Wayne. You're, you're, you're trying to get a record with one of those guys right there. You know, you still had the Ludas and the, the Lil Johns and, the you know, you still had those, but those that core right there were the guys that you were trying to get records with at the time. Uh, so you would run into each other at some of these studios, and if you weren't here in Atlanta, if you were dope like that, they're going to play you a record that they did with this guy that's in Wisconsin. Like, And we're going to ask, like, who did that? If there's not a tag on it, I'm going to ask. Like, hey, man, who did that, man? He's he hard. You know, so it's a... Uh, you're only going to go so far fabricating stories about producing records. And the guy you told me about, he actually went as far as to use uh, me and my partner's company name, Black Shield. Yeah, that was weird. He went as far as now. Now, now I'm wondering. I, I, I'm I'm wondering. Is this a guy that actually knows us and thought he could? get away with that far, far away in Wisconsin, knowing that um, we wouldn't be around to, to fact check him. So and, 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 your guess is as good as mine. Um, I, I just think, you know, it is always because like you said, you, you can tell who is full of shit the second they open their mouths because they're going to one, they, they talk too much, talking two, they're talking way too much about themselves and things that they did and then three just the way they talk yeah you know because you, you don't even, you can just sit back and let them dig their own graves but you could ask some some questions too you know um trip them and, up. and you you just know yeah just trip them up exactly and i think it's it's a method that a lot of people use because they're nervous when it comes to networking, they feel like the music business is all about egos and bravado and, and, and poking yeah. your chest out. And it's like, no, it's about it's we're all humans just making music. So let 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 your your work speak for itself. Let the work speak. What I, I said, I, I was only going to ask you one question. Let's end on this question. What is your advice to a new producer who's trying to get in the business and isn't sure how to network and get themselves in these doors 
and in with the right artist, what what advice can you give them? Uh, the advice, and I've been giving the same advice for for years, and, and it never really changes. Um, I always uh, I always lead off with um, you know perfect your craft. Number one, um, stay shooting in the gym. Um, and then the next thing that I always tell them is learn the business part of this. We are in the music business. We the, and, and we are part of the business of making music. So learn the business part of it so you know what's going on. You know what you're getting yourself into. You know what you're what to expect. Um and as far as uh you know the networking net the networking part of it has has changed from when we were um first you know especially with all social media and all you you physically had to be uh in some of these places a lot of time to 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 be seen you had to take yourself there but now with the power of of, of social media um man there's several ways you can do it you know keep content going um, don't be afraid to uh, to reach out to these artists. You'll be afraid who will answer. You, you, you'll be surprised at who will actually answer. Um, pay attention. You know, um, a big piece of advice that I would give is uh, definitely try to um, connect with a lot of these artists, uh, engineers. Because a lot of these a, a lot of these artists engineers are the ones that's playing them the beats. Um, they'll give the, the they'll they'll put their email addresses out there and just have random beats from people on Instagram on on, on X or wherever and just have them sending beats in to uh, the engineer. I mean, for me, a lot of times you know little little babies uh, engineer will hit me and, and say, uh, need some beats tonight for baby, you know, in tempo range between 140, 155 or something like that. Um, and sending it to, you know, cause imagine everybody is trying to send beats directly to, to baby, but to his engineer, not so much. And it's going to be controlled and he knows exactly where the beats are coming from because he's asked you because he, he's going to and he's not going to always have the same email. He's going it, to the email is going to change and he knows who he gave this new email to. So um, uh, that's a way to get in the door. Chris Brown's engineer, you know, um, you're not going to get a beat to Chris Brown, per se. He has millions of followers. You know what I'm saying? So sending a beat to Chris Brown, what's the odds that it's going to be heard? Now, that's not saying some of these artists don't do. There are some that do. But uh, the, best, the, best, the best chance you'll get to get to some of these artists, um, try to link with their engineers. Their engineers are all on, they're all on social media. Um, they'll be in the studio with the engineer. You'll see the engineer in the studio. Find out who some of these, not the mix engineer, the recording engineer. Find out who their recording engineer, because if they're recording in Miami, that engineer is in Miami with them. If they're out in Wisconsin, that engineer is with them, you know, in New York and Chicago, L.A., so 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 forth. And, and uh, you know, um, so that right there, you know, to get your music out, I, I would say, you know, the networking. Don't let the networking just be the engineer. Don't be a nuisance. Um, but, you know, your networking game, content, content still works. You know, that's another way um, people can take notice of some things that you do. Um, maybe do a remix to something. I mean, we're, technology is, is so uh, crazy right now with stems. Um, you know, take out a take out a verse of a record, do a remix, post it. You never know who might hear that. You know, so it's it's, it's a bunch of it's a bunch of ways to uh to get out there. But the one thing I I I I, I would say negative: don't spam us. The spam gets old quick. 
and it runs it it run it runs us away from checking things. You know what I'm saying? You know, so stay away from the spam. But if you're a serious uh aspiring producer, um, you know, network, get out and network. These events going on, pull up. And don't be surprised to, you know, don't 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 be scared to um say something if you see somebody there. Um I, I mean cuz me I'm a product, you know, and you as well, you know, we we come from the era of, you know, Jack the Rapper was a thing. Um I pulled up on DJ Premier. I called him coming out of one of the events. DJ Premier caught him and he talked to me. And he gave me some of the best advice um that anybody's ever given me. Everybody's saying the same thing now, but back then Premier said try to stay as independent as long as you can. That was the advice from Premier. And now that is the, you know, that's everybody's code uh, creed now, you know, staying independent. You know, and this was advice I got way, you know, at the tail end of Jack the Rapper, you know, when I when I was old enough to go to him. Um, that was the advice that I got from him. So, um, yeah, pull up, pull up these events, spend money. Have a job, you know, something. If you, if, if, if you have money, getting money from somewhere, um, spend money on yourself, man. I, I invested in myself, you know, invest in yourself, invest in your craft. Um, the handouts, I never looked for a handout for nothing. Um, I was always going to do it on my own merits. You know what I'm saying? I, similar to what we were saying, um, just 10 minutes ago, um, if you're dope, somebody's going to find you. They're, they're going to hear you. It, it, it's it's, it's going to, you know, but your work ethic is going to lend to that. So if you have that work ethic, um, you, you know, your, 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 your networking work ethic is also top notch. Oh man, you're going to, you're going to get out. You're going to get out there. Mike Will, Mike Will was example of that. When we were doing all the Gucci and Jeezy stuff back then, Mike Will was just, he was always around. He was the youngest kid in the room. He was there, though. He was always there. His beats weren't always getting picked, but he wouldn't give up. And every time we were at the studio somewhere, Mike Will, Mike was there until Mike became Mike. You know, so. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, I, and that's, that's, I'm glad you said that. Because a lot of people get discouraged, and, and I'm sure it took Mike Will many years. And, and you can, there are artists that, and producers, just all types of creatives that just aren't ready at the beginning. Yeah. And they persist. And then all of a sudden, and it's amazing to see because that's just the process that everyone goes through. People, you know, you don't just suddenly wake up one day and, like, I'm, I'm going to be a famous producer, and, and that happens day one. Yeah, no. It happens day one thousand. Yeah, but yeah, you know what you do between day one and day one thousand is what matters. Yeah, um, leading up to that point. So once again, appreciate you. Uh, how, how can people find you on social media? Follow you, support you. Uh, all my social media: the Fat Boy, T H E F A T B O I. The only difference is Instagram. Uh, my original Instagram page got hacked. And I, I could never get it back for some reason. Couldn't get it back. So um, there's a an underscore at the end of the fat boy on Instagram. But everything, the fat boy, T-H-E-F-A-T-B-O-I. 